Polo Grounds in New York City for the featherweight championship of the world at 126 pounds from Hartford, Connecticut, the contender Willie Peck. And at 125 pounds from New York City, the featherweight champion of the world, Sandy Sadler. And from a neutral corner, your host, the undefeated world's heavyweight champion, Ricky Marciano, sparring with the man with a million faces and voices to match, Jonathan Winters. Jonathan, put it there, kid. Thank you, Rock. I'm sure glad you <laughs> Hey, you got a pretty good play yourself How about there. that? Huh? That's all right. I pick on little kids a lot. Little kids, yeah. yeah. I never had an adult. <laughs> I go in at uh, 195. 195, yeah. and you know something? I think you're in real good shape. I'm feeling pretty good shape. Yeah. A couple of small pizzas here and there, you know. And, <laughs> but uh, I ride a bicycle a lot, right? You do? Oh, That's yeah. real good. And I work out with a rope uh -huh. in the room. Uh huh. Because if you do it outside, you know, people, people stare at you, think yeah. you're working out in a camp or something. And I have a sweatshirt on, you know, uh, with my name on it, just uh -huh. in case some guy'd spot me, you know, for a movie, <laughs> not for a real fight. Buddy, I've seen you many times, and I think the... The part I like best is when you go into those sound effects. Well, I guess, Rock, uh, the better part of my life, I've done sound effects. Uh, I started as a kid. Now, I'm an only child, and uh, I'm not bitter about that. I always say, say to all uh, children who are, are uh, one, you know, only one child in the family, uh, automatically you're first on the will. Now, if it's 200,000 or just a top and a, and a goblet, uh, you get that. So, you know, don't be bugged about being a... But I... Uh, I used to do a lot of sounds. I didn't have a lot of teddy bears and bunnies around, you know, but I did these things. Uh, there was a little kid uh, lived across the street from me, Billy Cohen, and he and I used to get together once in a while, and uh, I'd do the, you know, hey. the horse running across. And then I, we both had pretty good gun sounds, and that's the reason when uh, we'd play Cowboys and Indians, why they'd choose us. You know, <laughs> Billy go to one side, i go to the other, and we... There seems to be trouble in the past, Bob. Yes, the Sioux came down out of the valley. Those things were full of them. But um, I, and then of course I'd throw an explosion from time to time. Uh. Well, I got the whole outfit, Bob. <laughs> Looks like we better move out. But I did sounds uh, for a reason. A rock, uh, just like they use sounds in movies. I thought if I could paint a better verbal picture, that was the reason for the sounds. Tell me, on your um, skit where you do a baseball player, yeah. see that, that was great. Uh, could you do a fighter or have you ever done a fighter? Well, that's a funny thing, Rock. Uh, I've never done a fighter in my act because uh, most of the guys that I have seen do fighters have always made them out punchy. Right. And, uh, all right, a lot of them do get punchy. But uh, why not? I've often thought maybe someday I'll do one. But make him an intelligent guy, a guy like yourself. Right. You know, come on like this, you know, and lock jaw set in, or the eyes. Hey, boy, I was sitting there, and a guy hit me the other night. Um, this isn't true. Buddy, it's so nice to hear you say that. I, I, it makes us feel good to know that uh, you think that way of the modern-day fighters. If you were to um, one day put a little skit on about a fighter, how would you do it? How would you portray him? Well, let's see. I, I think I'd portray him this way, Rock. Uh, say, um... Well, uh, Mr. Marciano, uh, as you know, in uh, about uh, 10 or 12 minutes, I'm to go out into the ring and participate in fisticuffs. Uh, which, uh, of course, I don't really uh, enjoy fighting, but uh, it does bring in a few bucks, as you Americans <laughs> say. Ha, <laughs> ha, Enables me to get a number of cars, Rolls Royces. I must have four or five now, and have a very nice home in the country, and a flat in the city. <laughs> Just through topping a few traps in the face. I see it's almost time. I thought I'd give you my stance. See, uh, Mr. Rocky, this is a pose that I use for the Americans, uh, because I think uh, most of those chaps use this type of pose. Then in my country, it's pretty much this way. And I have a hole, incidentally, cut in my left glove, and I motion the fighter over here in case he doesn't know where to come, you see. And I say, oh, uh-oh, fellow struck me before I had a chance. I don't think I'll fight tonight. Say, <laughs> would you uh, like to take a ride in my Rolls Royce? <laughs> I think I'm going into retirement. All my teeth are gone. Every one of them, as a matter of fact. You wouldn't know it, but I look like I'll be eating soft crackers for at least a <laughs> fortnight. <laughs> great. Just great.
There's the bell for the main event, a title bout for the featherweight championship of the world. Willie Pep against Sandy Sadler. This is a return match with Willie Pep, who has the title. Let's see Sandy Sadler battle for it. Polo Grounds, September 26th, 1951. Let me tell you about it as I saw it. Willie Pep already in the ring. This could be his last shot at the big money. Here's Sadler coming in. He has unbelievable strength for a guy this size. And he'll need it all tonight. Because this is a do or forget about it fight. There's the boxing commissioner, Bob Christenberry, on the left. He's with Eddie Egan, who used to be the commissioner. Ringside here at the Polo Grounds is crowded with every big name in boxing and show business. Have you ever seen anything faster than Pep? Believe me, this is a kid who knows everything. The only trouble is, he's lived about three lifetimes already, and he's in with a murderous puncher. Look at that, that's Willie's game. If you don't keep him right in front of you, he winds up putting lumps on the back of your head. He's been that way since he was a kid. He used to take on the big guys around Hartford, run into a doorway and then when they try to follow him, he'd slam the door right in their faces. He's been a cutie since he was seven. again. Sandy, keep this guy from getting behind you or he'll murder you. Now that's wrestling, Willie. Referee Ray Miller is squawking about it too, but it looks to me like Willie would rather go without a referee. Sadler has beaten him two out of three. If Willie loses, he's in trouble. So there's no sense making a party out of this fight. Willie, you'll never be able to keep up this pace. Willie's going too fast again. This guy is four years younger than you are. Hey, what's this? Pep's trying to heal Sandy. Willie's still healing. Sadler's holding and Miller is getting mad. This fight is starting to get out of hand. Look at Sadler holding hit. That's illegal, and he can murder Pep with it. at his best. This is what makes him great. He better stick to this. Forget the rough stuff, Willie. Stand off and box this guy. and hit with his left. He hurt Pep, but Willie's gonna get up. That's right, take the eight count, Willie. 
And don't let this guy grab you again. Now in slow motion. Let's see how Sandler can ruin you. Willie's trying to grab Sadler and give him the business, but Sadler is real strong. See, Sadler's right. He's holding Pep in a vice, and he's hammering with that left hand. Willie's helpless. There he goes. is a good cut over the right eye and this is one cut that's bad the blood is running into Willie's eye and that's something you can't do anything about keep jabbing Willie protect the eye Out of there pep don't let this guy grab you or you'll never last and willie's got out of there with some nice illegal healing look at him heal again Sadler's face is going to be a mess if he keeps this up. In training, Pep worked with the wrestler for a while so he could handle Sadler better inside. I think it's the worst thing he could ever do. He's a boxer, not a gorilla. Here they go again. This is right up Sadler's alley. His arms are so long he can ruin Pep inside. He's got Pep crazy and Willie's forgetting all he knows. Now you're getting smart, Willie. You don't like this guy, then punch his face cockeyed. But do it from the middle of the ring. Back him up with that jab, and then go to work on him. That was low, and it was no accident. Look at this. For some reason, Pep, the great professional, gets mad like he's an amateur when he's in there with this guy. There's no sense getting mad in the ring. It's a trade, like being a bricklayer. Lose your temper, and you lose the fight. I got Pepper Head so far. What do you think of the fight so far? I think uh, it's pretty obvious to me that both of them are terribly uh, disturbed with one another. <laughs> I believe that. There you go again, Willie. I'm telling you, if you don't box this guy, you'll get wrecked. Willie 
tries to wrestle him and sadly yanks good on those arms. You're going to slow him down real good if he wants to do it this way, Sandy. Outside the ring, Sandler is a guy who just likes to laugh and spend money. But right now, I wonder if it's the same guy. Is he mean? Pep's hands are way faster than Sandler's. Sandy doesn't stand a chance if he lets Pep get distance on him. A little headlocker now. The only thing these guys haven't used is a knife. Sandy is an easy fighter to handle. You never have to look after him the way you do with most fighters. He goes to camp with one other guy, takes good care of himself, and you don't have to see him again until fight night. When Pep jabs, he has that classic move. He steps in behind the jab. He doesn't just flick it out. He makes it work for him. Willie rubs those laces over Sandy's face again. Sandy, tuck your head down inside or you'll have sandpaper for skin. Pep's eye is bothering him. is getting so dirty you don't have to fight like that Miller's warning Pep about rubbing his laces into Sadler's face Look at Sandy shove Miller. And look at Pep. Miller is wild. He was a good left hooker in his day and he doesn't like anybody throwing him around. These guys are making him look bad. Tell him off, Ray. I've never seen anything like this fight in my life. Not even in the streets. Look at Pep trying to trip him. I think Willie is going off his rocker. Come on, fight like a pro, Willie. Uh oh, now I see the trouble. Willie's starting to get tired. His hands are getting lower a lot lower than they should be. This is a terrible spot for a guy to get tired in. In slow motion. Here's Willie grabbing Miller with the left and throwing him to the floor. 
Now Miller starts to get up, and is he mad? Imagine, he's stopping a championship fight in the middle of a round. Willie's arguing with his corner. I don't think he wants to come out. They straightened out Willie, but he looks tired. But you've done some job on him, Sandy. He's dead. You can go in right now and get him, I'd say. Pep's legs have no bounce to them at all. He's just trying to maul his way through. See what I mean? Willie's forgotten all about fighting. He's only wrestling. That's right up your alley, Sandy. Start yanking on those arms. longer Pep can go. Sadly used to be a southpaw. You don't have to tell Willie that. His ribs are bent in from Sandy's hooks. Look at Pep. He's dead. He's gonna get hurt bad if he doesn't have any more than this left. Sadler will catch him with a shot and probably kill him. Willie, don't you have any gas left in that tank? Right into a clinch again. Sadler is just stalking him. He's still strong. He knows he'll get Pep. I'm afraid Willie is in for it tonight. We have a long way to go yet. at Miller. They've even got him tired. <laughs> Pep isn't coming out. He's calling it a night right in the corner. Here's Doc Nadiello coming in to look at Willie. I guess it's all you can do, Willie. If your legs won't take you, then you're gonna get hurt. And that eye must be murdered. Sandy Sadler, still the champ. He's a happy guy. He should be. He came out of this thing alive. It was the worst mess I've ever seen in a ring. And Sadler is telling the guys in his corner, I'm never gonna let anybody do what this guy did to me. In this fight here, we see the end of a real great career, a tragic ending to the, one of the greatest of all time, Willie Pep. He threw out his shoulder in the ninth round, I believe, and couldn't continue. And Sadler regained the crown. And poor Willie just fought on, but never reached the heights again. Well, for my money, Rocky was still one of the great fighters of all time. From the Marine Corps to a top star, you gotta do a lot of punching. Now that you're there, this pair of golden gloves will help to remind you that to stay there, you must continue to keep punching. Thank you very much, Rocky. This is a real thrill for a guy that uh, never had the gloves on but a couple of times in my life, and then that wasn't 
professionally. This is a, a big kick. The bigger they are, the nicer they are. And you can make it as easy as they did. Just remember, keep your left hand high, chin down, and keep punching. Thank you, Rock. I'm sure glad. <laughs> hey, you got a pretty good play yourself How about there. that? That's all right. I pick on little kids a lot. Little kids, yeah. yeah. I never get an adult. <laughs> I go in at uh, 195. 195. Yeah. And you know something? I think you're in real good shape. I feel in pretty good shape. Yeah. A couple of small pizzas here and there, you know. And, <laughs> but uh, I ride a bicycle a lot, Rock. You do? Oh, That's yeah. Real good. And I work out with a rope uh -huh. in the room. Uh-huh. Because if you do it outside, you know, people, people stare at you, think yeah. you're working out in a camp or something. And I have a sweatshirt on, you know, uh, with my name on it, just uh -huh. in case some guy'd spot me, you know, for a movie, not for a real fight. Buddy, I've seen you many times, and I think the, the part I like best is when you go into those sound effects. Well, I guess, Rock, uh, the better part of my life, I've done sound effects. Uh, I started as a kid. Now, I'm an only child, and uh, I'm not bitter about that. I always say, say to all uh, children who are, are uh, one, you know, only one child in the family, uh, automatically you're first on the will. Now, if it's 200,000 or just a top and a, and a goblet, uh, you get that. So, you know, don't be bugged about being there. But I, uh, I used to do a lot of sounds. I didn't have a lot of teddy bears and bunnies around, you know, but I did these things. Uh, there was a little kid uh, lived across the street from me, Billy Cohen, and he and I used to get together once in a while, and uh, I'd do the, you know, hey. the horse running across. And I, we both had pretty good gun sounds, and that's the reason... When uh, we'd play Cowboys and Indians, why they'd choose us. You know, <laughs> Billy go to one side, I go to the other, and we... There seems to be trouble in the past, Bob. <laughs> yes, the Sioux came down out of the valley. Those things were full of them. But um, I... And then, of course, I'd throw an explosion from time to time. Uh... <laughs> well, I got the whole outfit, Bob. <laughs> Looks like we better move out. But I did sounds uh, for a reason, Rock, uh, just like they use sounds in movies. I thought if I could paint a better verbal picture, that was the reason for the sounds. Tell me, on your um, skit where you do a baseball player, yeah. see that? that was great. Uh, could you do a fighter or have you ever done a fighter? Well, that's a funny thing, Rock. Uh, I've never done a fighter in my act because uh, most of the guys that I have seen do fighters have always made them out punchy. Right. And, uh, all right, a lot of them do get punchy. But uh, why not? I've often thought maybe someday I'll do one. But make him an intelligent guy, a guy like yourself. Right. You know, come on like this, you know, and lock jaw set in, or the eyes. Hey, boy, I was sitting there, and a guy hit me the other night. Um, this isn't true. Buddy, it's so nice to hear you say that. I, I makes us feel good to know that uh, you think that way of the modern-day fighters. If you were to um, one day put a little skit on about a fighter, how would you do it? How would you portray him? Well, let's see. I, I think I'd portray him this way, Rock. Um, say, um... Well, uh, Mr. Marciano, uh, as you know, in uh, about uh, 10 or 12 minutes, I'm to go out into the ring and participate in fisticuffs, uh, which, uh, of course, I don't really uh, enjoy fighting, 
but uh, it does bring in a few bucks, as you Americans say. <laughs> Enables me to get a number of cars, Rolls Royces. I must have four or five now, and have a very nice home in the country, and a flat in the city. <laughs> Just through.